up to states to decide whether to expand Medicaid. Doing so in Texas would ensure close to a million more Texans, but Republican leaders here in the state have refused to do so for a decade now. Our next guest is a Texas congressman who wants to skip over states altogether and let cities make that decision. Congressman Lloyd Doggett making his first appearance on our program this morning. He represents a very gerrymandered district there between Austin and San Antonio. Congressman, it's good to see you. Welcome to our program here. I, I want to ask you about this bill that you proposed uh, the other day. Your bill would let cities and counties apply directly for these Medicaid funds, bypassing the state. I'm curious, how likely do you think something like this is to pass the House and actually make it to the Senate? I think it's a good possibility. It's being designed as a very pragmatic, homegrown approach uh, to let local leaders who are willing provide for their neighbors. The state has failed for over a decade. I believe uh, this approach will have some appeal in the Senate. I hope to get it in the reconciliation measure that will be taken up uh, by September. What makes you think this will work? Uh, I believe we have seen how it worked during the pandemic, that so often county judges and mayors were the real leaders to put in the health measures that were uh, threatened by the governor and by an incompetent president. Uh, and I believe they can uh, deliver because their economic benefits as well as health care benefits with a healthy workforce. We could just by getting Dallas, Houston and San Antonio cover half of the Medicaid eligible people in this extension. Naturally, I want to see it uh, expand through much of the rest of the state and getting all of the Democratic members in Texas over 40 members nationally from the 13 states. Uh, I think it suggests broad support. Uh, it will be a, an efficient way to deliver these resources. And maybe eventually, you know, if Dallas does it, Fort Worth will say, hey, we, we need to get in on this too. And maybe Denton will conclude uh, that uh, the state legislature, it's time to act and cover everyone. What kind of a response do you expect from uh, Republicans in Texas? Well, I'm trying to present it as something other than a confrontation, but as an alternative. Uh, and I hope uh, they will recognize that there are incentives in the bill for the state to get additional expenses to cover their participation and cooperation with the localities. But we also put in some disincentives if the state uh, tries to interfere. Congressman, let's talk about state politics just for a moment sure. or two. I, I know you know what's happening down there at your old stomping grounds in Austin, at the state capitol at least. Uh, Republicans want to change voting laws in this state. The governor has just called a special session. Uh, Democrats obviously are outnumbered. What do you think they should do? Do they have any options? Well, I think they need to keep focusing public attention on this. Because, you know, after the legislative session, Suddenly, some of the Republicans uh, decided, uh, oh, we didn't really mean it, that you could buy a beer at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, but you couldn't vote. Uh, we didn't mean some of the other provisions in this. This was didn't know it was in there. It was an accident, some other excuse. Uh, I, I believe they've already had an impact. They've also drawn attention nationally, and they need to keep drawing attention nationally so that we can pass what I think is the Manchin approach. Uh, to voting rights, a narrow bill to protect, prevent against suppression and prevent partisan gerrymandering. I think if we could just get that approved with Joe Manchin's leadership, uh, that would be good for Texas and for all the other states that are facing these incredible suppression efforts. Redistricting happens uh, again this year. You're obviously very familiar with that. Your, your district has been carved up uh, multiple times over the years. Well, what do you expect to happen this go around? Well, I am an unwilling expert on redistricting. <laughs> I've been run from uh, Austin, New Mexico, from Austin to uh, the almost the outskirts of Houston. And now I have more of my voters in San Antonio than I do in my hometown of Austin. Uh, the redistricting process will be under near total Republican control. And I'm prepared for whatever they do. I don't expect it to be good. I'm getting my campaign ready and I'm gonna run wherever I think that a progressive Democrat uh, living in Austin can get elected. Uh, and they need to know that uh, I'm ready to go and uh, I'm not daring anyone. I'm just prepared to see that my community, which was divided into five pieces in the last redistricting and left Austin as the largest city in America that doesn't have a majority of its population in one congressional district, 
that that needs to end. But however they split us up, 10, 12 pieces, I'm going to be ready to go. It doesn't sound like uh, that you have retirement anywhere near your sights at all after serving for 26 years. Well, I've been very fortunate uh, to be able to serve my community, uh, and uh, there's more work to be done. Uh, I don't plan to stay here forever, uh, but I do plan to have an opportunity, voters willing, to work with President Biden to complete his agenda. Congressman Doggett, thank you for the time. Thanks a lot.